Okay, motor car not here today. We're gonna be uh, diagnosing and replacing um, an engine oil pressure switch or sensor. Looks like this. Um, it's on a GM. This happens to be a Pontiac G6 2006. This applies to uh, those type of vehicles from 2005 to 2010. Also the um, Saturn Aura 2005 to 2010. The code is a P0523, engine oil pressure, sensor circuit high voltage. Oh, that went off on me. And what that means, it, it's a code that comes up right away, and a lot of times it doesn't set the uh, check engine light. But um, it's an important code because, you know, you don't want your um, oil pressure not to be monitored. God forbid you're on a trip or somewhere and, and you lose oil pressure, you would want to know about it. Um, for some reason, it's not lighting the, uh, the dash um, light on the uh, check engine light but I guess that would be a different issue maybe because it's not severe enough and maybe it has to re uh, after like a certain amount of times it hit the light but I just caught this on the first um, try and it failed and more it's the most common thing that goes wrong with these is the, is the sensor itself okay a lot of times they leak because there's oil pressure through here a lot of times they just leak out of here or on the sides and everything. It causes it causes a bad leak too, um, or the you know the internals of this just fail, and that's probably what happened here. A uh, good way to do it is you check, you check for voltage. You should have a five uh, on the on the census on not the census on the plug side on the uh, connector side. You're supposed to have a five volt um, reference, okay? And as long as you have five volts with the uh, ignition on then the circuit's probably good and it's probably the sensor. Okay, and it's not that hard to do. The first thing you wanna do is disconnect the negative battery terminal. Right there, you take it off. This one happens to be a 10 millimeter. All right, just put it to the side. Because what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you where it's located. Okay, this is the front of the car, okay? The front of the car is that way. We're looking this way on the passenger side, all right? Let me get a better, better angle and show you where it is. It's right here. You see the oil filter? It's on top of the oil filter housing, okay? The uh, um, front of the car is this way. This is the passenger side, okay? Now, this plug right here is kind of hard to get because the uh, starter's in the way. Okay, so what you're gonna do, it's not that hard. This starter only has two bolts in there straight out right over here. You got one here and one here. I believe they're 13s, okay? And you could just hang it out of the way and you can get to that plug. You don't have to take it out. You don't have to take the wires off, okay? And before that, there's gonna be a little plastic cover here. It's a 10 millimeter here and a 10 millimeter here. You just take this off so you can get to the bolt over there. Just two bolts and it's gonna slide out of the way. That's what we're gonna do now. And then I'm gonna show you how to replace it. So I'm pretty sure, no, those don't look like 13 to me. Okay, so those are 15 millimeter, okay? The two uh, bolts for the starter. Okay, look, see what I did? I took off that plastic piece with the two screws, they're 10 millimeters. And here's the long bolt and the short bolt for the starter. The longer one goes near the oil pan, the shorter one goes there. Okay, so now it's easier, you know, just to move it out of the way so you can get to the plug up here. All right, I'm gonna get to the plug and take and then, uh, take the terminal, um, the, the connector off and show you what size socket you need to take it out. There's this 13 millimeter nut. I'm sorry. Okay. Let me get it. Right over there. You take that 13 millimeter nut off and you pull out that bracket a little bit so you can get the um, socket in there like I have it now. You see this? Okay. This, this, this bracket right here. This bracket right here, when it's when it's all the way down, the, the socket can't go flush on the um, on the back side of the sensor nut. You don't want to strip that nut either. You know the sensor itself. Okay, I have it now, and I'm just gonna unscrew it, and I'll let you know the size of the socket. Okay, the socket is one and one sixteenth. There may be a millimeter version, but um, I didn't have anything deep, so I had this one deep, and it fits on good. Okay, now, see a little oil came out. So when you take the other one out, prepare to put the, uh, the new one in really fast because it drips out a little bit, but you can do it really fast. I didn't even lose that much at all. 
okay? And just tighten it down snug. You don't, don't strip it because it already has an O-ring to seal, okay? So you just, you know, put it down hand tight and then with the wrench, uh, like a quarter turn, nice and snug. Make sure you put the, um, the nut back over here, the 13 millimeter, and thread in the um, starter bolts by hand. Wiggle them in, make sure they're in by hand. Do not use an impact, you'll strip them. Okay, and put the plastic shield here that protects rocks and stuff from going inside. All right, the flywheel, that's, that's important, the two 10 millimeters there. And that's it, make sure you plugged in the sensor. And that's it. Okay, that's how you replace that sensor. So started it up, like I said before, there wasn't an engine code, but over here where it says um, uh, engine oil pressure, you see how it's fluctuating a little bit? Give it more gas, gets a little more pressure. That was stuck on eight something, 800 and something. It was just stuck, it wasn't moving. And that's why, that's why well, there was a, a code, but it wasn't, it wasn't triggering the light. I only got it from the scan tool. So that's what you're supposed to see. Okay, you gotta see it. It's at idle right now. It's supposed to be from zero to 1050, but I would imagine on the towing, towing or, you know, a little bit heavier oil in there, whatever the manufacturer recommended, maybe, I don't know if you can get to a 1050, but anyhow, if it's not moving or if it's stuck high, which, which that code was, was an indication it was stuck high, that's the problem, okay? So now, even if I go back, um, I go back to engine module and check for trouble codes, read codes. we got no codes and and that's how you do it all right guys motor car nut please subscribe hit the like button any questions uh leave them below i'll try to answer them as, as soon as i can i try to answer all my questions i have many vid videos on how to save a lot of money this job right here you would brought it to a dealer or you brought it to an independent mechanic they're going to charge you a couple of hundred bucks for something that you could do for twenty dollars and get your hands dirty like mine not saying that everybody's got to live, make a living, you know, but my channel is about how to, you know, save money, do it yourself, and maybe you can learn something. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.